Great. So um, I think first of all, what I want to do is to take a minute to um, first of all share uh, two things. One is the um, YouTube channel for Rema that kind of hosts a lot of these informations and um, serves as a testament to some of the things um, that is being done. So I'm going to put that in the chat. And um, there you can read a lot of um, things that we do as well. Uh, and then our LinkedIn page, which is, um, there's a fine in that. Um, Put it in, put it in the LinkedIn page as well. Yeah, but basically, Raymond Consult is a is a firm that um helps people in preparing and submitting green card applications and. Part of it involves writing um, the whole petition from start to scratch and reviewing and editing already prepared applications and many more. Um, at Rema Consult, we specialize in a range of immigration services, including EB1A, which is the extraordinary abilities, um, petitions. Um, we do have YouTube channels and then LinkedIn that will serve as informative resources for individuals considering various um, immigration pathways, offering experts guidance on EB1A, uh, NIW, and many more. We are dedicated to actually showcasing success stories, providing in-depth knowledge, and addressing common concerns that are all related to um, immigration. So basically, just to give you um, just kind of a snip, snippet of what we do here at Rema. Today, we are interviewing one of our clients who used the services of Rema, and we want to learn from his experience and, and kind of also help um, others throughout this journey. Um, before we, we delve into the um, whole interview, um, I would give um, Salisu an opportunity to... Um, Briefly introduce himself as as how he he did with it. Can you raise your voice? Oh, okay, 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 okay. So let me see. Forgive me, it's new stuff, so I don't even know what I'm doing. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So I was saying that before we. Uh, we begin with the interview itself. Maybe this would be an opportunity for you to briefly share with us um, who you are as much as you can. As much as I can. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so I'm um, Sally Sue, uh, currently a postdoc at um, University of Massachusetts Amherst um, in the field of plant pathology. Interesting. Um, the scientist guys always scares me with their yeah, big, big terms. Plant pathology. Wow. Interesting. Anyway, as you heard from the horse's own mouth, and this is um, Dr. Salisu, and um, he will be sharing with us um, what he went through working with Rima Consult. Without wasting much time, I guess I'll ask you the most first question is, how, how satisfied are you with this whole process? Okay, so let me, in simple terms, very satisfied. Yeah, I guess we've discussed that several times. Very satisfied, yes. And uh, I think, um, let me say, I had value for the money I paid. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm very satisfied, yeah. That's, that's great to hear. Um, I guess one of the things that I always ask is, I, I, I never knew you until you reached out to Rema Consult. So how did you learn about Rema Consult? Yeah, so, well, I think I I heard about you guys, you for, for some time now, but um, I wasn't really sure whether I should work with you or not. So let me just be honest, yeah. So um, I think 
the day I made up my mind to start, that was the day I started searching for lawyer, lawyers or law firms to contact. And then I reached out to a couple of law firms. I wasn't getting response. Yeah, probably they were waiting to respond to me sometime later, or if actually some of them responded sometime later. And then um, I, just, I decided that I think you guys had, um, you had one of these sessions on Sunday or Saturday. So I quickly said, no, why don't you just try this guy? And then I messaged you Monday morning and then we started that same Monday and then we we're done in just a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that's interesting. And well, I'm 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 really glad that you took that step. It's it's nice to know that it was through one of these interviews that you decided to take the step. And then obviously you're here because there is approval. So that's really good. I guess I would say that you indeed you've you've said something about why you decided, but I, what, what was this thing that really influenced your decision to choose Rema Consult? Yes. So, um, well, you, you've been having some interview sessions like this one. Um, people talking about their successes with Rema Consult. So I guess that was the main reason why since people are, are, are able to get it approved with you, then why not? I can also give it a try. So I said, well, go for it. And, and finally... I'm here also sharing my experience with you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I guess um, what were some specific factors or features of Rema Consult that stood out to you? Well, I think the important one is the money. Yes. So uh, <laughs> even though uh, we all know, well, I, I, Generally, this NIW thing, EB1A or EB1, EB2, is very expensive. The law firms I know are charging 8000 7000 yes. And even, like I said, I contacted some law firms. They responded later, and some of them were saying, okay, 7000 6000 8000 I, I think the minimum I saw was 5000 actually. Yeah, but with you, it was way less than that. I, yeah, so the most important feature is the money. Cheap, yeah. And even um, there are guys which are also not law firms like you, uh, yeah, uh -huh, which are also actually charging more than what you are taking. So in, in terms of um, the law firms and then the consultancy groups, you are, so far you are the cheapest one I have seen, yes. Even though we are still hoping that uh, after some time you, you will give us, <laughs> uh, uh, let me say, a better deal, yeah. <laughs> Glad to know that definitely that is one of the things that um, stood out to you. That's interesting. And and one of the things that I always see is that um, I understand that the, the differences um, and the challenges that immigration or students will come in face. And so um, that, that is one of the things that we take pride in in trying to balance um, the dream of becoming a green card holder and also being able to afford it um, uh, reasonable. I do know that some law firms charge as much as 13,000, 13,500. So definitely it's really cheap to work with Rema Consult. Um, I, one of the things is, um, can you really tell us from some, some of the, the background information? I know you said that you're a postdoc, but like, can you give us a snippet of some of the projects you're working on and like how it is really important to the united states okay so um let me start from the top yes so now which is now yes so like i mentioned earlier i'm a postdoc at the university of massachusetts amherst um i joined in october 2021 and since then i've been working on on projects more of um USDA sponsored projects grants yeah so that was one of the things we used um I think we used three of the important grants which I'm working on uh, one which was the 4.1 million dollars grant and then we had two which were I think almost 200 um thousand grants yeah so I'm working on and they are all related to cranberry diseases yeah so currently I'm a plant pathologist but then I'm specializing in um managing diseases um, on cranberries yeah so I think and then uh, moving backwards in my for my PhD too I also worked on uh, at that time I, I wasn't really familiar with the grants yeah but then I know definitely it was there was some grant which my supervisor won and I was working on pumpkin diseases too at that time 
And I think those were the things I used for my application. Interesting, interesting. It's it's really nice to talk about it because most often people are too focused on things like I need citations, like I need X number of publications. I need to do so many things before I get uh, um, this whole thing approved. So it's really nice to hear that um, one of the focus of, um, of of the application was really leveraging your expertise in federally funded projects. And if you're just joining us, um, or if you don't know the meaning of USDA, it's, it's um, the United States Department of Agriculture, right? So one of the things that was highlighted in um, Dr. Salisu's um, um, petition was his pivotal role that he was playing, even though he wasn't awarded, if you understand clearly the matter of Danasi, um, he wasn't necessarily awarded, but he played pivotal role in funds, which means that he is um, currently um, championing projects that means a lot to the United States. Um, the USDA is federally funded. So if Dr. Salisu is working on projects that is funded by the United States, then it means that what he's working on is really important, right? So I guess one of one of the things I would like you to get out of this video, if you're watching it later in the years, is to understand that there are so many things that I could be leveraged other than things like citation. Now I'm going to ask you straight forward, Dr. Salisu, do you have a lot of citations? No, I don't have a lot of citations. Yeah, yes. So when it comes to citations, yeah. So um. When it comes to the NIW application, we usually hear citations, publications, citations, publications. And that is one thing I've learned from you is it's not just about publications and citations. It's more like using what you have to get what you want. So uh, as an NIW applicant, uh, if you contact REMA Consult, I, I think the goal is they want to know what you have. And what and they can use what you have to help you get what you want, because I never thought that I could use the grants for my NLW application. When I met you the first time, I, I I already mentioned to you that I was preparing the application package myself, but then I was confused about how to go about the whole thing. Yeah, but then after our first meeting, you asked about the grants, and that was when the thing clicked. Yes, so the grants, yes, really helped with my application. I guess that was the, the the important part of the whole application, the grants that I was involved in, even though I was with them, it's just like I had it, but then I didn't know how to use it. And that was what you taught me, how to use those grants for my application. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. For those of us who are watching and um, for our sanity, can you, can you state the number of citations you have as of the time we did the application? Yes, yeah, so as, as at the time, I had 11 citations. Great. So yeah, you heard from him. Um, we the, the whole process is um, to be able to use what you have to make a case for you, to make a very compelling case. Um, one of the things that I saw when I got in touch with um, Dr. Salisu was his pivotal roles in, in different funded projects, which were all crucial to things regarding food security, right? Just think about it. Like without even going so far, think about a world whereby there is no food. You go to you go to Walmart, there is no food, right? You literally can't survive. Give yourself about two or three months, right? So um, definitely the proposed endeavor for Dr. Salisu is really of national importance because he is making sure that food is in abundance and specifically making sure that diseases aren't happening to plants. And he's he's done some wonderful work. Um, I think he forgot also to mention that in his master's, he looked at tomatoes. So he's looked at the different breeds of um, of plants, like from pumpkins, cranberry, and tomatoes. So his his portfolio is really what was um, stressed upon, right? Um, I guess one of the things that I would like also to ask you is, could you share a little bit about... Um, the confidence that you have before you met us and how did you still feel confident while we were working on the application? Yes. So in terms of confidence, yeah. So um, for that, um, I wasn't really sure. 
before I met you, yes, I wasn't really sure, but all I knew was um I had people who were saying, oh, just go ahead, give it a try. Yes. So it was like 50-50. But after I met you, it was more like 90-10. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you you made it very clear to me, it's not just about the publications and citations, but then I was working on something that had national importance, and that is what National Interest Review is all about. If you can prove or make a case that what you are working or what you are doing is benefiting U.S., then you you will be approved. Yeah. So that was what. Um, so yeah. So basically, so that's it. Yeah. So after I met you, my confidence increased. Let me say, I I, I even even before we submitted, I I knew okay, this is it. It's going to happen. Yeah. So I was just writing, and and I think we did it within a short time because I already had all the answers. Yeah, in a short time we completed the whole. Yeah, because I already had all the answers. I knew what I was about, but I just didn't know how to make a case for myself. And that is where you stepped in and you helped me make a case for myself. So, yeah, thank you very much no, once again. No problem. One of the things I don't know if you recall, but one of the things is that when you called, you called on a Monday, I think, and. You it's Monday morning, like, yeah. Yeah, it was a Monday morning. You were like, can we submit on by February 15th? Do you, do you remember? Yeah. You said, can we submit yes, by yes, February yes, 15th? Yes, yes. But for the sake of sanity, when did we actually submit it? We submitted, yeah, I think we used like three weeks. Yeah, in three weeks, we, we got everything was done and, and submitted. Yeah, so I think um we submitted on 7th um February, yes. 7th February, actually, yeah. Even though we're targeting 15th uh, February, but we submitted on 7th, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. And um, that that could also highlight on some of the issues about promptness with regards to timelines when promised. Um, so I, I guess we, we've we spoken about some of the big projects you're working on and other things. Um, one of the things that I'm curious to know is what about this whole like write up, this whole um process? Did you feel like Oh no, Rema Consult is just on top of their game. Something that that about the write up that stood out to you beyond well, some of yes, the yeah. so so uh, yeah, so with as I mentioned at the beginning, yes, so I was writing already. I I I I I, I was writing like a plant pathologist, but <laughs> But then you reminded me that those guys sitting there are not plant pathologists. They are just guys, or I, I, won't, I, I don't use the word random guys, but then people who are not specialized in my field. So if I write in my in, in my plant pathology language, Rima Consult translates it into legal terms or makes it, uh, put it in such a way that those guys, they would understand and see the value of what I'm doing. And that is where you guys really stand out. And that is so. And so, anytime I send you something and then you respond back with the updated petition, I look at it and then I say, "This wow, yeah, this guy's really the guy. The guy knows his stuff." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and that is one thing that I always want. It's great you bring this up. Um, the whole idea is to convince somebody who may necessarily not know about the specifics of your field, right? Um, everyone's field is unique, right? And if you ask a plant pathologist some of the things, they can really go in depth trying to give you like the scientific stuff. Not that it's not great, it's great, but how do you explain it to a child who knows much, who knows less about all the big things, <laughs> but what is the value of your work? What does it uh, mean for the United States? Is it making the United States more competitive? Is it helping issues that are really important, right? Imagine eating foods that are not really healthy. You know, the health implications of what is going to cause. Those are some of the things that definitely Rema Consort specializes in, like making sure that um, whoever reads it, if, if the person doesn't have any knowledge of your field can still understand the value and not only the value, but how does it that value translates to the whole of the United States? Really about why should the US care about Dr. Salusu? Why is it that we should give Dr. Salusu a green card among several people in the world, right? So I guess that, that is something that we definitely um, can boast of.
Um, I guess I'm trying to capture. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, can you share your overall impression of the services that were provided by Rima Consul during the month we worked together? Overall impression, yeah. So, the thing is, I I think it's you. It's that it comes from me myself first. I knew what I wanted, and you guys too were there to work with me. So, I think it it made sense, and everyone was very happy. I was happy with you. You were happy with me because. I wanted it, you also ready and available to give me what I want. So our impression, excellent. Everything was okay. I was happy and I was I'm I'm also happy you were also happy with me. Yeah, because I don't know about your 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 other clients. Yeah, because sometimes I'm sure some of these things would be very slow. Some people are should I do it? I'm not sure. Yeah, but I wanted it and you were also available. And then so I, I send you emails, you respond. And then so in terms of response to response time was very great. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I would say is that I really enjoyed working with you. I enjoy working with all the clients, but I, I really enjoyed working with um, Dr. Salisu on, on issues of promptness, like and the um, issue of um, his his zeal to go for it as well, like he rightly said. I, I really enjoyed working with him. And but the good thing is I'm still going to work with him for a while. So he stuck with me. Um, so um well, I guess were you kept well informed and updated throughout the process? Like did did you feel like you by the time you finished, you you have you had most of your questions answered? Yes. By the time I finished, I had most of my in fact by the time I finished, I knew exactly I, I knew everything about the whole process. Nothing was hidden to me. I knew from page one to, to page 100. Everything was very, very clear. There was nothing hidden. And I understand the, the whole process now. And, and that is what's one of the things I, I, I like about uh, Rima Consult. Yeah, Not, nothing was hidden. Everything was very clear right from the beginning. The phone calls, the text messages, the email exchanges, everything was just very simple and clear. Yeah. So satisfaction, I'm very satisfied. Yes, I keep saying that. satisfaction is, is 100%. Yeah. The only thing is the money. Yeah, even though like, even I mentioned, <laughs> even I, I, I mentioned that you are the cheapest, but we are still hoping that <laughs> you still make it easy for people to be able to come to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Keep thinking about it. Do, 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 based on your experience, would you recommend Rima Consult to others in a similar situation? Oh, yes, I will recommend people to be more consults for that one hundred percent. Yeah, I will recommend. Yeah, yeah. especially the serious ones, those who who want to get it done in a short time. Yeah, I will recommend them. Yeah. And um, um, I know you've highlighted some great moments, standout moments, but are there um, any areas where you think Rima consults could also improve their services? Uh, the, the, the only improvement is the money. <laughs> uh, seriously oh. uh, that is the only thing I, I i understand that you are still the cheapest like i mentioned you are the cheapest i've seen so far yes you are the cheapest yeah but and it's and seriously it's still okay you are the cheapest it's still okay i'm not saying that you guys are charging too much no you're the cheapest and it's still okay yeah but apart from that i i haven't seen anything uh, yes there's really nothing if a person means business, then remote consult is there for you. Yeah. Okay. So um, we, are, we, are, we are heading towards the end of our um, questions, but one of the things that I wanted to, you you probably you can also shed some light on that is, do you have anything for people that are considering this whole process and what you think Rima can help them do that as well? If you can share yes, that. Yes, so... So for those who are not really sure whether they qualify, if you're not sure whether you qualify, I guess uh, I would just suggest that just talk to Rima Consult. Rima Consult will make you qualify. Yes. <laughs> if you're not sure, just talk to Rima Consult. They'll make you qualify because it's like, like I said, they'll just ask you, what do you have? What have you done? They will just use what you have and what you have done to make a case for you. I guess that's all about this national interest waiver. 
being able to make a case is not about the degrees or the citations or the publications or whatever. It's just about being able to make a case. And Rima Consult will just listen to you and then make a case for you. Yeah, so just talk to them. Um, tell them what you have, what you have done in the past, what you are doing now, what you're going to do in future. And then they'll put together a, a very nice case for you. And then uh, in, in, in the next few months, you'll also be sitting here also <laughs> answering some questions like me. <laughs> De definitely. Um, one of the things that you, you've highlighted, which I think is really important, is about um, what you have and how Rima Consults helps you make a case with what you have. If, if I recall, there are a lot of things that you had that really helped make a case. So, for example, some of the unique sequencing that you did um, yes. and in, in, in the virus with regards to tomatoes are things that you had done in the past, but I don't think you even carefully thought about how you can leverage that um, unique originality to show how you are well positioned. Um, in you issues are very, very right. right. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, if I, it was something I never considered in my in, in, in the petition I was trying to write for myself. I never thought of it. Yeah, even though I had it, I did it myself. It has been published, but then I never thought of using that until uh, I, I until after the first meeting I had with you when you were asking questions and then I started thinking about, oh, so I did this one. We can use this one to, to make a case. We, use, we can use this to make a case. We can use, use that to make a case. Yeah, so you are very right yeah so it's all about making a case yes so you just talk to your consult and then uh they will help you make a case for yourself just just don't be scared uh -huh. don't don't feel like i'm not qualified no just you have a phd or you are doing your phd you have a master's degree one way or the other you are involved in something that is beneficial to the u.s and you can use that to make a case definitely so again like i said um, like um, Dr. Salivi said, and I've also been saying, it's really about what you have and then helping Rima Consult, helping you make that case. Sometimes you trivialize a lot of things. Like you may you may be having a very competitive scholarship or award that you've uh, you gained, which we can leverage on how competitive that award was to show that you are really an expert. Maybe you were coming to the United States. You had a lot of admission. That shows that a lot of them people are interested in you because then it shows you're an expert in your field, right? So there are so many different ways that you may be having, but you haven't thought about it. And one of the things that Rema Consult prides itself is being able to understand what you have and using what you have to help build why the United States should care about you and should grant you the NIW application. Um, like I said, this is the end of the um, the interview. We are going to open it up for some questions that you may have within reasonable time. And then um, after we would um, leave. So this is the time. If you have any question or questions that is reasonable enough for us, for me to be able to answer it or Dr. Sili to, then depending on who you're addressing the question to, then this will be the time. If they don't have questions, I, I have a question for them. <laughs> um, Emmanuel, you have a yeah. Okay, Emmanuel, yeah. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, congrats once again, Salusu. Thanks. So you talked about... Um, before you started, you had um, 10 citations and you were working on some federal um, government projects. Um, aside mm -hmm. those, um, what other stuff did it stand out for you? Uh, I want to know, aside those two. Okay, so um, we mentioned the publications, we've mentioned the citations. Um, uh we had the original sequencing of viruses that i did in the past and then um i also also did some extension work if you are in my field 
um, you know how important extension is. So extension is more like uh, translating what we do in the lab or um, to to the consumers. In this case, because I'm an agriculturist, I also talk to the farmers. So talking to the farmers directly is one of the things we use. So I had several extension publications. And then the conferences I attended, the oral presentations, everything was added. Uh, the what else? I think these are the things I remember. I don't know if. And then um, so we also we I think there was a part where we also use um, um, is it? No, I didn't use the scholarships. So I also use my graduate assistantships. Yes. Yeah, so graduate assistantship too. Yes. Yeah, so as long as you're a graduate assistant, um, in the U.S., it means that you are offering some services and. Not everyone gets graduate assistantship. So if you are able to get one, then it means that you you that's something you can also leverage uh, to make a case. Yeah. So it was one of the things we used. Uh, what else? Yeah. Can you remember anything else? Yeah. I think this were the things. Yeah. For the most part, so graduate assistantship, teaching assistantship, fellowship, scholarship, anything you have. I think. Yes, so it's, it's all about, just don't worry. Yes, so uh, like I said, I was, I was about to ask a question when Emmanuel asked. So my, my question to those of you listening to me now is, what, what are you waiting for? Yes. <laughs> Why haven't you applied yet? <laughs> yes. So if, if if you have an answer, then it means that you are ready to talk to a Rima Consult. Just go talk to them, tell them what you're waiting for. And then they will give you the best response. And then in 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 the next few months, you you also be working in town with your green card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's really um, important. The the question you ask is really important because one of the things that um, I was worried about for some so many years ago was like I didn't have publications and I didn't have citations. And I mean, a third of mine. If, if you know something about math, it, it tells you that, yeah, like it takes a while before things are published. It also takes a while before things are cited, right? So um, one of the things that you should understand is that every field is unique. So there is no one and cut way to make a case. No, it's not going to be possible. Like I always use this simple example. When Messi, and even if you look at the wife of um, Donald Trump, he she got an EB1A. She doesn't have publications. Messi doesn't have publications. So it, it is not really about publications and all. It is about what case, what do you have, and, and how does the things you have meet the requirements. Yeah, so definitely, um, the, I don't think there is a one way to, to make a case for any NIW or EB1 because every field is different. You don't expect Cristiano Ronaldo to have um, things. like, But of course, like, if, if we are talking about Cristiano Ronaldo, then maybe we can look at different things like maybe media publications and uh, maybe Ballon d'Or Awards, you know. So every field is unique. And so if you hear things out there, you need to step back and question yourself, what is my field? And um, how can I make a, a case through my field? And if you're having that questions, like Dr. Salisi said, one of the best places um, is to start from Rima Consult. And sincerely, if you come in, we're going to assess you and tell you what we think. If we think you don't cut it, we would help you improve your portfolio in the next three, six months. But if we think you cut it, we would um, definitely strongly suggest you do an application. And there's a question that is... Uh, yeah. my family Can I say something you... before? Yes. And it. then one thing I've also realized is if, if you talk to these lawyers or these big law firms, they will always scare you. That one, I, yes, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. In fact, uh, they charge exorbitant amounts, 7,000, 8,000, and yet it seems they are only interested in taking the easy cases. People who have 100 citations, 200 citations, people who, who no, seriously, it's very annoying. Yes, they, they only take the easy cases, people who have 100 citations, fellowships, scholarships, grants, and in fact, <laughs> and yet they are charging 7,000. Meanwhile, those those who don't have those amount of, because if the moment you send your, your CV to them, they'll tell you free evaluation. After they've charged you like $100 for consultation and or $200 for consultation, they'll tell you free evaluation and then they'll write back and tell you, you don't qualify. Meanwhile, you actually qualify. Is because they, they don't want to work hard to, or, or to help you. But Rima Consult is there to help you. Rima Consult will understand your situation and then help you make a case for yourself. 
It's by the those law. So if you've ever contacted a law firm and and, and they say you you are not qualified yet, wait till you you finish your PhD, wait till you get the citations. You may never get those citations. <laughs> You may never get those publications and you're running out of time because you, you're on F1, you, you will graduate, you want a job. Yeah. So don't wait. Just talk to Rima Consult and they'll, they'll find a way out for you. Yeah. And and I think that, that is really how Rima Consult came about, right? And in 2018, I reached out to Ellis Porter and I reached out to Chen and they told me point blank that I, I don't qualify for NIW. Um, and I, I was even asking them for EB1. I was still ambitious. They said, I don't qualify for NIW, let alone EB1. I self-petitioned myself for NIW. I self-petitioned myself for EB1 and got all of them approval. I still don't have citation because my field is unique. If you check my professor who's been working for over 20 years, he has about 35 citations. He's doing topology. Who is going to cite his work in topology, right? So um, what am I saying? Like, if if... It's, it's everything is dependent on um, leveraging what you have to um, make a case for you. And definitely, Rema Consult, that's, I think that's a good job with regards to that. So if you have those ones, we would be happy to work with you. I have a question that my family is not in the US yet. Can I add them to my application and how does it help them to come to? Good question. So um, in the first stage, Usually it's just yourself because you are the one making the petition. But in the second stage where you are going to be adjusting from um, F1, H1, whatever visa you have to green card, that is when if you have a family member, like maybe you have a spouse, you have some kids, I strongly suggest you add them so that um, and they can be anywhere in, the, in any part of the world. You don't have to be in the US to apply for green card no so wherever they are in the world you can do an application and then the only difference is that you are going to be here and they are going to be in wherever they are if it's Ghana, nigeria kenya whatever country they find themselves in um, they will go and get their green card at the embassy the u.s embassy in that country while you will get yours from the united states citizenship immigration services in other words USCIS. So that kind of helps about this whole thing. Um, there is a question about um, this may be out of play, but is it possible to briefly? Yeah, of course, briefly. So um, after getting the NIW approved, the next step is to adjust status. And um, that adjustment of status depends on the day of submission, right, which is basically the priority date. A more reason why applying earlier is really important. Um, currently, it is backlogged to about... Um, 12 to 13 months. So the more you wait, it just means that the more time you're going to take to be able to adjust. But basically, the second stage is where you adjust your status. Um, and then that is when you get the green card in your hand itself. But you can't get the green card without the approval as well. Um, maybe one more question from, yeah, I think, is it? Everyone's hand is raised up. Is it enough? Okay, yeah. Oh, okay, maybe it's the previous ones. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But to Dr. Salizu, why didn't you consider the EB1? Is there a specific reason? To either of you, priority or normal submission, which one would you refer them? You want to go first? Why didn't I consider? Come EB1. again? Yeah. EB1. Is it why, you... why didn't I consider the EB1? Yes, uh, that is a very good question. Yes. So I think we have discussed this already. Yes. Like even, even with the even with the NIW, I wasn't really sure. Yes, I was uh, before I met you. It was like fifty fifty, and then uh, when I met you, even though I think there was a time when you, I think even in our first meeting, uh, Rima Consul suggested maybe I should try the the EB one. Yeah, you were trying to give me Vim, and I said, well, I I don't want to waste my time. Maybe I, I might get an RFU or denied. Just let's just do the NIW one. We are sure that I will get. But uh, after getting the 
um, the EB2, now uh, I'm thinking maybe I should have just gone for the EB1. So I, I don't really know. I might end, end up going for it. I'm, I'm still discussing with uh, Rima Consult uh, the option of going for the EB1. Yeah. But uh, it's something I still have in mind. Yes, because I don't think that... Uh, as, as of now, I think I'm qualified. I just need to do a few things, and Rima Consult is there to help me to put together a, a good EB1 case. Like I said, they're always there to help us make a case for ourselves. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. so basically, so maybe after some time, I, I will consider it. But I'm still discussing with with um, EB1. So, if you're asking me why I didn't go for the EB1, it was because I wasn't really sure. That's why I didn't go for it. Yeah. There, there is a question on a scale of 10. What would be the approval rate in adjusting your status? Oh, 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 on a scale of 10 for adjusting. Unless you have done something really felony, like you've done really yes, something criminal. Really criminal, like, you know, you've done mm -hmm. something very bad, like you've killed somebody or something, like, or maybe, you know, like, you know, things that the U.S. abhor, like maybe, you know, unless you've done those things, Adjustment is almost always, and of course, you have to be in status. You, you don't want to go out of status. So, um, yeah, but if you've not done anything outrageous, like, you know, if they won't, they, they don't even, um, they won't disqualify you based on health. If, let's say, you are doing health and they even realize there's something, you just work on with the doctor to start your vaccinations. If you don't have some vaccinations or let's say the, if you have TB, you just start the TB um, vaccinations and all of this. So even for health reasons, they will not disqualify you for adjustment of status. So unless you've done something extremely criminal, like something that is really yeah. very, very bad, the chances of getting the adjustment after NIW approval, and of course, you've not gone out of status, you are still in status, it's, it's 10. It is always 10, yeah. Unless you've done something very bad, like you've killed somebody, you've, you know, things that are really criminal, then that is different. But you should be fine, whoever joins us. Um, and then to either of you, priority or um, priority or normal submission. Oh, okay. Well, it depends on you, right? So if, you know, I always say that there are two, there are two types of people in this world. You have those that they get very anxious and so they want to know the result of something. And I, I was like that. So I use premium processing for all the two process, processes. And, and so I guess what I would say is it depends on you. If, if you want to do priority, it's up to you. But given that currently the wait time is about 12 months, if you are not too anxious of a person, you can always do the normal processes. I have a lot of clients who are going through the normal processes as well. That usually takes about more fairly 12 months if you want to be very firm. Yeah, it takes a, although I've had one client get approval in one month, but that is really an outlier. So I, I don't like saying that if you don't go for premium processing, you are going to get your case approved in one month. No, you would you'd hear back in 12 months. That is very fair. Yep. Um, yes, definitely. I hear, because does it cost extra when you want to reapply for EB1 after having an approval? Yes, definitely. Those are two different things. The, the Making a case for NIW is different from making a case for EB1. So it is not like you're going to use the same information to apply for it. No, the, 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 the arguments are different, so it's going to cost extra. Um, I think most of the questions have been answered. Yep. Yep, most of the questions have been answered. Yeah. So I think that's great. Um, I have a second yeah. question. Oh, okay. Um, with regards to the um employment, right? So if let's say you get your NIW approved within, let's say, a month after a premium process. And um, let's say you want to apply for jobs. When they ask you, do you qualify, um, do you need work authorization in the future? Are you supposed to say no or yes? 
it all depends on a lot of things, right? Um, if you have an opportunity, so you get an NIW approved, you don't have an EAD yet, you don't have um, a green card yet. You get an opportunity to have an EAD after 13 months. So it depends. If if um, you if you have OPT, which OPT, if you are in a STEM, again, clarification, if you are in a STEM program, you have three years of OPT, which means that you would have enough time that you would you can boldly tell your employer that no, I don't need it because it means roughly by after 15 months you should have an EAD and then wait for the green card itself. So it's it depends on your scenario. If you have 13 months or 15 months whereby you can have OPT, and then you don't have to tell them that you need it. Yeah, In other so, words, uh, for instance, in my case, for instance. Um, I have three years OPT, and my OPT is ex my three years OPT ends this year September. Yes, but then in my case, I'm I also have H one B opportunity. So when my OPT expires in September or before it expires in September, I'm going to be switching to H one B while I wait to do my re uh, adjustment of status early next year. Yes. So I so the thing is you you have to be in you, you have some you need something to keep you in status and working while you wait for um your adjustment of or, or while you wait for the time to adjust your status. Yes. So so that is why uh, Rima Consort is uh, is encouraging you guys or those of you who are still doing your PhD or masters to apply as early as possible because not everyone is going to get my situation. Because I, I'm likely to be working with with a university and getting H one because H one B itself is also a lottery, but for the university it's not a lottery, so it's like automatic. I'm 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 going to switch from my OPT to H one B while I wait to adjust my status. Yes, so the time is now. If you re, if you are really interested, don't wait. Just present your case to N uh, to to Rima Consult and let them help you out. Basically, that's. But if you are going to wait. You you might find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, and then you now start playing TikTok with your life, yeah, or, or with your work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's really true because for the most part, if if let's say you have about one year, or let's say like in one year and a half to complete your program, and you apply it, then it means that even before you complete your program, you can be able to adjust. So it's exactly. all about being able to do it on time so that adjustments would not be a problem. Yeah, and so definitely you don't want to be in a scenario whereby um, you do it so late that you would keeping your status is a problem. Yeah, so mm -hmm. just to answer your question, Imano, you, you need to be in status throughout till um, when you can be able to adjust, which is currently about 13 months out. So whatever... You get to, whenever the, the petition was submitted, you would have to make sure that you are still in status till we do an adjustment, which is taking about 13 months because of how the US visa bulletin is showing up. Yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks very much. That answers my question. Sounds good. Okay, well, um, I think for the most part, um, most of the questions have been answered with regards to um, this uh, uh, process. And if you want to reach out, definitely I can put a, um, an email for how you can reach out to Rima. Um, so, let's call, reach out, or oh, not a direct message, I want mean, to send it to everyone. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I just put in the email that you can reach um, Rema Consult and definitely will be more than happy to work with you. And um, once again, thank you so much for your time. And then um, we have an upcoming um, approval success story to share on March 23rd. 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, it's really a unique case because this person went to a lawyer, paid exorbitant money, and this person got an RFE. RFE means that the, this person got to request for evidence. And the lawyer told 
her that she should withdraw the case because she's going to get a denial and because this particular officer will, will deny you um, she approached Rima Consult. I worked with her for the next two months, beginning December 5th, and she got an approval. And so she will be sharing her story, but this is for EB1A. So she will be sharing a story of how Rima Consult helped her reply for an RFE after she paid a lot of money to um lawyer to help her and it didn't go well. So um, definitely would be um, having that interview March 23rd, 5 p.m. Central Time. So if you can make it, definitely see you all there, but um, bye for now.